Lying, of course, that which is false. Pseudos, no, it's false. Con any contrary to fact statement with the intent to deceive. Satan, of course, is the father of lies, we're told in John 8. And he wants us to believe that God is a liar. Not so. It's one of the things God can't do. Sad consequences always seem to come from lies. And, and uh, John, in his first epistle, says, you know that no lie is of the truth. The first sin judged in the early church was the sin of lying in chapter 5 of Acts, Ananias and Sapphira. David said in his haste, I said, he, David said, I said in my haste, all men are liars. And I was delighted to see Carol's comment about that. He said, I had a long time to think it over, and I still agree with David. <laughs> men are no good. Write that down, girl, so you don't forget. No believer can be neutral about the battle of truth, and we're going to discuss more of this when we get to chapter 16. The, 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 the truth is one of your weapons. See, we're all members of one another. The Christian is called to be punctilious, to be honest, even in little things. We should never deceive a fellow believer. We are called to loyalty. We must never be unfaithful to a member of that body, and we're going to talk about that uh, in chapter 6. Because all of us are fiduciaries. And when you understand what a fiduciary is, that's going to bother you. We'll talk about that when we get to chapter 6. Continue. Be ye angry and sin not. Be ye angry. Is that what it says? Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. That's a direct quotation, by the way, of Psalm 4, verse 14, in the, in the Septuagint. See, anger is momentary insanity, according to Horace. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Stand in awe. Tremble in the presence of God. We are to be angry at sin, but loving toward the people. We get it backwards. We love sin and hate the sinner. No, 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 it's the other way around. We love movies that have violence in them, right? Whatever. We love sin. We hate the sinner. No, no, it's the other way around, gang. We are to hate the sin and love the sinner. That's what Christ did. We be angry at sin, loving the people. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. Do you hate evil? Be careful. Okay, anger is an emotional arousal caused by something that displeases us. There are things that should displease you. There are times it would be very wrong not to be angry. We should be angry at nothing but sin, by the way. Let's be careful about that one. Now, it's awfully difficult to practice truly holy anger and righteous indignation because our emotions are always tainted by sin. The moment self comes in, my anger is sinful. Malice is anger that smolders. The same anger can suddenly burst forth, which we call wrath. There are times when it would be very wrong to, not to be angry. We should be angry at nothing but sin. Neither give place to the devil. That's tied to this, interestingly enough, to the devil. Anger cherished becomes malice. Satan works through a malicious spirit. Malice is the anger that smolders. The same anger can suddenly burst forth. We call wrath. Anyone can become angry, but to be angry with the right person to the right degree at the right time for the right purpose and in the right way ain't easy. And that was Aristotle. <laughs> okay, stealing. Well, st Satan's also a thief, right? John 10. He coaxed Eve to take the fruit that was forbidden. That's stealing. See, of work. A lazy Christian robs himself and others with God if they are lazy about work. Every Jewish rabbi was taught a trade. Quote, if you do not teach your son a trade, you teach him to be a thief, is the, is the rabbinical proverb. Interesting. You sort of wonder, where does our welfare system fit into all of this? Interesting to realize how non-biblical those things are. Not to care for them, but to care for them the right way. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. That's just the opposite of stealing, isn't it? It's flowing the other way. Steal no more. See, God instituted private property as one of the Ten Commandments. Private property is one of God's commandments. Now, stealing takes many forms. One of the broadest forms of stealing is socialism which is social plunder and a denial of property, private property rights. That's the path we're on. 
You've got candidates running for office that are openly or privately, but in any case, socialists. We're on that path. That's the danger of a democracy in, in, in lieu of a republic. You've got mob rule here. You've got a media that has sold itself out to special interests. The grasp for power, don't underestimate that. By the way, back at our level, delinquent payables are a form of stealing. If you promise to pay in 30 days, you should pay in 30 days. To, to pay in 60 is a form of, it's a form of stealing. Delinquent payables are a form of stealing. Many Christians don't realize that. See, instead of stealing, we are to labor. That's really what it's all about. The men whom God called in the Scriptures were always busy working. Moses was caring for sheep. Gideon was thrashing wheat. David was tending his father's sheep. The first disi four disciples were casting or mending their nets. Jesus himself, apparently, was a carpenter. There's some debate exactly what that was, but won't get into that here. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Matthew 12, 4, 3, Out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. Boy, is that indicting. Corrupt communication. What do you mean corrupt? Rotten fruit. Worthless, bad, or rotten. Romans 3 says, Our mouths are like an open sepulcher. In Jewish terms, that's as rotten as you can get. Corrupt communication. We expect change in speech when a person becomes a Christian. Trace, you do this yourself. Trace the word mouth in the book of Romans. Check it out yourself. What's the remedy to corrupt communication? Fill the heart with the love of Christ so that only truth and beauty can emerge. Never have to say, take this with a grain of salt. That's an admission that we shouldn't have said it probably, right? But rather, let your speech be seasoned with salt. Do we not understand the difference? And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of death. Boy, this, this is a precious verse here. Grieve not. You can't grieve someone who doesn't love you. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not an it, it's a he. It's a person. And he loves you. Father loves you, obviously. Son loves you, obviously. Holy Spirit does too. Otherwise you couldn't grieve him. To grieve means to give pain. I can remember very vividly I had gotten a very special thing for one of my daughters, and I was excited about coming home to surprise her with this kind of a spontaneous, elaborate little gift that I picked up. And as I drove in the driveway, Nan tipped me off that the daughter in question had been horrible that day, and some circumstances occurred that, that uh, I would have to deal with. And I can remember the pain that I felt, because I was so excited about wanting to give this gift, and it would have obviously been inappropriate. And I remember that. I grieved over, you know, I remember that so vividly. This may be the most important part of this section. The Holy Spirit also loves you. You can't grieve someone who doesn't care. No one can unsee, says he, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. No one can unseal the work of the Holy Spirit which continues to the day of redemption. There's another nail in the coffin of losing your salvation. Your, your, your salvation is sealed by the Holy Spirit Himself. He abides with you forever, John 14, 16. Okay, this last one, we'll wrap it up here. Five sins to avoid. One is bitterness. Do you know bitterness was a sin? That surprised me to find that in this list, to realize it's a sin. What is bitterness? A settled hostility that poisons the whole inner man. A settled hostility that poisons the whole inner man. Reminds me of worry. Worry is a trickle of fear that soon cuts a rut so deep it drains all other thoughts away. And bitterness is a personal form of that. A settled hostility that poisons the whole inner man. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Wow. Bitterness leads to wrath and it hardens the heart. That's why it's a sin. The basic cause is an unforgiving spirit. Learning how to forgive and forget is one of the secrets of a happy Christian life. Putting those things behind you, put away from you, to be put away from you. That's an aorist imperative. 
which means it's a one-time, once-for-all decisive act. It's not a continuing act. It's a once-and-for-all done deal to forgive it. Not to bring it up again. It's done. It's forgotten. It's behind you. And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Forgiving, that's a reflexive form, by the way. Each of you forgive the other. It's a two way street, not a one way street. And the other thing to learn, I'm very grateful for someone that really emphasized this in my very early years putting the most charitable construction on apparent faults or faux pas, having a bias in favor of a person, put on the most charitable construction. You hear a rumor about your partner. You take for granted that it's misunderstood. He's on your side. You know, you, you don't give room. Put the most charitable construction on apparent faults or faux pas. You forgive rather than magnifying the faults of others. Why? Because we have been forgiven of far more than we have any capacity to imagine. Justified hurts are the most dangerous because they're the hardest to let go. Those hurts that are sort of marginal, you can let those go. The ones where you're hurt is really justified because he did this and this and this. He's really justified to be upset. Those are the most dangerous for you because they're the hardest for you to let go. Think about that. Mm -hmm.